Do you remember, Disco, I predicted last week that um, that sooner or later, like anything else in life, information was going to start trickling out out of AEW from people that have left? Yeah. Here's a good example, Punk. Like, for example, I guarantee you anything in the future. Remember that girl that left and it's kind of under mysterious conditions and she kind of accused them of oh. some- yeah, swole. Oh, swole. Because she was accusing them of racism, wasn't she? Right. Yeah. And then they probably made her sign an NDA, and sooner or later, you know, who knows how many years she'll know, start man. talking. You were saying? Like, AEW, just, uh, it's just like masters of propaganda. You know, he wants to, do, he wants to control the narrative. He wants to what, what promotion marginalize does, people what, that, that criticize what, their show. What promotion doesn't like, do that, but they. Yeah. theirs is even worse because you've got the president unlike anybody else in any other company that I can think of, agitating wrestlers and fans and going after them. And you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, what right. other person does that in that position? I mean, you could argue maybe Dana White. Dana White, he's a he's an MMA, but uh, there's a big difference. Dana White actually knows what he's doing. And he's I very mean, successful. He's, 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 he's very successful. But yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Making a lot of money. Right. right. Yeah. 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 I think so. You know, it's funny too. Is I think Tony's all in on uh, this narrative that they're going to be increasing the rights fees a lot, right? Yeah. Well, and, you're talking about that tweet he put up about uh, against Eric. Yeah, yeah. But but you, you know, and that's that's you know, I, I don't think ever, anybody could disagree that they should be getting more rights fees if you know you look at the marketplace and compare them to WWE. You know do, what WWE get, is getting, and we had mentioned that like you know WWE merits like nine times the amount. You know. Uh, that AEW gets based on based on all those metrics, but that would only put AEW back right, right about where they were before. Now, the, what, what are they just you know, looking up? What are they making rights fees right now? They're like seventy million for three shows, something like that. Four years, one hundred seventy-five mil for the total of the, of the whole thing, or four years? Okay, wait, no, that that was uh, okay. So it was extended. Uh, it's approximately yeah, two hundred. Yeah, two hundred. Yeah, two hundred. Up to two hundred forty million per year is where it went for all three shows. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so say like eighty million a show, or, or basically you would think like a uh, like nine, 90 million for the two two hour shows, and what's the one? So sixty million for the hour show, like you know, around that, right? Uh, wait, okay, uh, so so the New York Post reported one hundred seventy five million for four years, but Keller reported two forty. What did your friend say, the Thurston Howe? Yeah, yeah, I'll check it. I'll, I'll actually hit him up. Yeah. Well, you can't. Doesn't he have it already? Do you, you, do you have a contact with him, Joe? A little bit, yeah. Oh, your content. So, you, you do you like asking for numbers sometimes? If if it's not listed, if we need it, like when I was trying to find uh, quarter hour ratings for sports and stuff, remember that? All right. Well, here's the thing. Okay, syndicate they they, they raise the rights fees. Okay, and they they have more income coming in, and they can then say, "All right, we're making money now." But who gives? Do do the fan as a viewer doesn't give a if you're making money. There's there's a fringe group of people that would want to argue that. You know, like like the, the haters say, oh, they're losing money and stuff. But like as a fan, all we care about is the content that we're consuming, consuming on television. You know, as, as a, and if they increase their rights fees, what is Tony? So so here he is now. He's he's you know uh, mismanaged the company. He's a rookie now. He's got experience doing this, still making some mistakes. What do you think he's going to do with the money? Like we, we know what she should do with. Like okay, Coco, your Chad Khan replaced Tony with you. He sent Tony Hill, kind of like in the, let's pretend it's like WCW days where they sent Eric over. They were sent Russo, or, you know, like if the book, like the ratings are, they're sending Tony home and we're doubling our rights. Okay, so we're getting $160 million for Dynamite instead of $80 million. Okay, Okay. When you find out that we have, you have all this money, what's the first thing that you're doing? Well, I would first put over Shad Khan's mustache. I like his mustache right. a lot. That's a good story. And I would also ask him that I once read an article. I find him to be a very fascinating guy. I once read an article where he said that he was in a a room full of white billionaires, old white billionaires. He goes, you wouldn't believe some of the things I heard. I'd like to hear that conversation. Okay. You you can imagine. Most of the lights don't want to hear it. You know, what, what does Jerry Jones say? What does this guy say? What does this, because they're old white guys that probably grew up. You know what I'm saying? When everything was racially segregated, some of them keep that mindset, like right. the guy in North Carolina or Donald Sterling. They're, or they're, they're rough. A lot of guys we don't even know. Still rough. Still right, around the redges. Yeah. Because yeah. nobody's going to tell them. Right. They're not, they're right. not, they're not right. subservient or working for anybody. 
Right. You know, like, you know, like right. who's going to tell me how to act? You know, say, right. Yeah. 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 So, but, um, right. so from WrestleNomics, it's forty four million a year for for what? For all television, everything. Really? Yeah. That's absurd. That's no. Well, you got to think yeah. about well, it. Disco. They, they're going to get it way came, more than that. Yeah, right. Came, yeah. Okay, but wait a minute. You got to remember, he came on the scene. No previous ratings history, no previous working history, basically a rookie. You know, they're not going to give him all that money because he's got to prove himself. Now, if there was an extension and they gave him more money, I don't know if this guy Thurston can tell you that. But what I will say is I don't know how much money they're going to get this time because Collision doesn't really get good ratings. Maybe to them, uh, what's the other one? Rampage doesn't really get good ratings. I don't know if it does to TNT, you know, to whoever. And, you know, Dynamite's ratings have actually gone down. That's my point. That's that's a good point because you know to think about all those 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 data points you just just brought up, right? Right, bro. You're in that now. Your 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 deal is coming up, and you want to renegotiate. How much better of a position were you in, like 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 three years ago? Right. You know. You know that that's what we've been saying all along. Not only that, it's like the you know they've got to follow the product because it's you know they're committed to the product. You know they right. two of their hugest stars just left: Cody Rhodes and right. CM Punk. Yeah. You know, and who knows how they're going to treat Jade Cargill. So far, so good, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. And they're not really drawing, drawing any good in arena shows, for except for some, you know, like the Boston did good and the Greensboro I, with Sting. Me and you and everybody else that's been around the block and done this for a long time, you know, and this is not the fans and the, the fans of the Mark podcast or something, they're thinking like, look, you're... Yo, Tony won the Booker of the Year three years in a row, so now it's like, yo, they're, they're in good hands, right? But the only thing, even if they get this new, you get this money, the only thing that I am like optimistic about with that company going forward, okay, based on all the negative metrics we're seeing, seeing the, you know, the, the product, and is that if they make a drastic structural change at the top of creative, and bring in and like like delegate some of the authority to guys that we know that work there can can help out more and like like elevate the product above the above the current creative that it has. Well, here's the thing: like when you're asking, that, I have zero confidence in the when company. you were asking me about the Shad Khan thing, uh-huh. right? Uh, I I digress somewhere else. But first thing I would do is they spend so much money on talent when they should be taking half that money and putting into production. Right. So I would definitely put into production. Okay. I would definitely have video packages, you know, yeah. before each match. Okay. When somebody new comes in, I'd have video packages too. Okay. All this extra riffraff of wrestlers that just accompany people to the ring for no reason. All the people that they're paying and they're not working, I would cut them because I heard this new CEO guy that came in. Like he's about the bottom line, and that might have been part of the cuts. Wait, you know? see, whoa, whoa, whoa. like he's there to make sure that they make money. Wait, who is the C? Who? What's he? That this new guy that they brought in, Oshby or whatever. The AEW. Is. Yes. So look this up. I've never heard. Mm-hmm. But you probably pay attention to this. Kosha, Kosha Irby or Kasha Irby. Yeah, that guy. What? What's his? What? It's what's his? Um, COO, and he's going to oversee COO. Yeah, oversee marketing, finance, HR, live events, consumer products, and licensing. Right. So oh, it was very so, telling. Wait, wait. wait. Like that. Okay. I, I think, yeah. And he, the thing he's, is, um, the th- think about it. That's the what a CEO are, does. Yeah. I'm, I'm aware of that. It's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of work to be done in all those areas and a lot of data, data ad- analyzation. Okay. If you hire one guy, now is that guy going to hire a team to help in this in, in those to increase their their uh, their metrics in those categories? Well, you would think so. One guy can't do that all alone. But it was, I can't. but but I don't. You know, I, I don't know if Tony knows exactly how to run. Like I don't know if he well, knows how to run this thing. Well, now he's got a guy. Well, I, I bet you. I bet you anything. I I would I would venture to guess. This is just supposition at best. That his dad looks over his finances and he's go, bro, you need somebody to come in here and handle your finances. You're too right. busy doing too many things. Who knows, right? But it, what a coincidence. This guy comes in and then we have the first day. He's never had cuts like this, like, you know, getting rid of six people right. at the same time like WWE does, right? You're not a publicly traded company either. But right. they like finally said, okay, we need to cut some of our losses. Right. So let's yeah. cut the fat. Right. I would get rid of all those people that are being paid and you're not using them. Number one, 
Number two, I'd get rid of all the excess fat of all the friends of everybody. I want you to, I want you to think about this too, real quick. Just a little sidebar. Right. Think about like all these people that they're cutting and stuff that they were paid, right? Right. And they're just cutting them. That you never saw on TV. Right. And like, just get, but they never, they couldn't even get a spot against like Wardlow on one of those nights in a two minute squad. <laughs> or like, they, they had to bring in a jobber for that. It's like, why? So, so like the fact that it took so long to cut the, it's like if you guys weren't even going to use these guys for anything. Like, like, why did you keep them so long? You know, so at least they finally cut them, which is a good thing. But it's like, right, because, bro, it's TV almost like on TV before they are like, come on, right? Yeah, it's almost like I like I told you before. It's almost like, you know, like a sneaker head. You go into his closet mm-hmm. and he's got all these sneakers in the boxes. And right. you're like, do you ever wear these? No, I just, you know, he just has them. You know, he just collects talent and then doesn't right. use them. Where's Scorpio Sky? Some guy asked about him the other day. Where's Ethan Page? Where's that? And well, we can play John. Then a go go guy from Britain. Yeah, where's where all these guys? Where's Nick Camarado? Right. Unbelievable. Sure. Probably underneath you. <laughs> and so, uh, so, the, so here's a couple. Go ahead, Connor. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, so you have all these. So I'd get rid of all the excess fat. I'd get rid of all these friends that people bring in, you know, and they add nothing to the product, right? I'd make sure that, you know, I sat down with everybody face to face. And I said, bro, this is how we're going to run things. I will not tolerate this, this, and this. And if they don't like it, they can leave, you know, and you find somebody else, you know, and put the law down, you know. Those are some of the things that I would do coming in. And I'd get some good people creatively to put around me to help with creative. The uh, the TV deal we were talking about, uh, it expires at the end of the year, okay? And uh, so – at the pre-revolution media call, Tony Khan spoke of a new media rights deal for the company in exceptionally glowing fashion, stating in part that he believes there will be a big bump in store for all three of the television properties, making the company profitable then for decades thereafter. So Eric Bischoff's take was that deal is already done or Khan is out to lunch and shouldn't be speaking about such a thing publicly. Wait, wait, Bischoff, so where is this tweet? Um, no, he said it on 83 Weeks. I'm reading an article. Oh, he did? Yeah. Interesting. So you want to hear a little bit more? Yeah. Okay, so it says, on 83 Weeks, co-host Conrad Thompson referenced Khan's comments, quoting him precisely as saying that Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision would get huge increases for sure, while citing a note from Dave Meltzer that said Khan and AEW are still under exclusive uh, exclusivity clause, by which at this time, they can still only negotiate with uh, Warner Brothers Discovery. From there, Thompson asked for Bischoff's take, and Eric said, it sounds to me like the deal has already been negotiated. I mean, if that's the case, I'm sure we'll be seeing that AEW will have real high-profile visibility during the cable upfronts. So uh, Eric's take is that all the like when Tony tweeted the other day, like it's a good thing you stopped your business show before we announced blah blah blah. He thinks the deal's probably already done. You know, what was that about? I don't, I don't remember that. What happened? I'll pull it up. Uh, Eric stopped doing the strictly business show with John Alba, right? And Tony responded to it with a tweet that said something like, it's a good thing that you stopped your business podcast before we announce our new rights fees or, you know what I mean? Like, because you'll look yeah, stupid. It's a petty, like it's a goofy tweet. It was a right. Like, yeah. Why, like, Eric, like, <laughs> bro, this I, was I, funny. I, 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 I think I, yeah. that people want to see him go out of business. Okay. And I don't know, maybe there are people that want to go see him, that want him to go out of business. But I know Eric doesn't want him to go out of business. I don't want him to go out of business. You don't want him to go out of business. Right. I don't think Cornette wants him to go out of business, but maybe like that would be like the ultimate. What would we talk about, number one? He's he's, he's great. He's great. Him and his company, any company is great for content, right? Right. That's number one. And number two, bro, what he doesn't realize and and the people that don't like us is we want them to succeed. And all we're doing is giving him solutions. And if you if you go back if you go back five years, bro, more than half we said would be happening has happened or is happening. Right, and it's so stupid that fans are critical of us when we're being critical of the product during a time when you're not performing well in the numbers. And we're trying to explain to you maybe this is one of the reasons why you're not performing the numbers. And I think people think that like there's a there's a chicken and the egg situation going on here. Where they think that that people like us hating on the product causes people not to listen to, not to watch it. Okay, which is a ridiculous if we're irrelevant and you, you know you can't have that. Those arguments don't you can't marry them to each other. That we're irrelevant. We're you know, we don't. We're just trying to be you know 
you know, it's like that doesn't make any sense. No, if anything, I, I'd say listeners that hear you guys do the review are more likely to turn on something you say is good, and right. they might even turn on something you say is bad just to see exactly. you know, the train wreck nature of it. We we literally do a review for a lot of our audience doesn't even watch the show and say they will watch it if we put it over it us. Okay, mm-hmm. but we're not going to put over stuff that like is not like what are we supposed to do? Like we're critics. We're not, you know, for, for years and years and years and years, Dave Meltzer got to watch me on television every single week, and he would put a star rating next to the mix of match that was his critical review of my work, right? And, like, that's that whole community, that dirty community and Tony Khan, and I know message boards, I'm sure, I'm, I bet you Tony Khan back in the day hated, hated my work. Like, he probably thought I was a wrestler, right? Because I didn't do a bunch of, you know, moves or something. But all we're doing is the exact same thing critical review of stuff that we're watching on tv and if like it's a critical review usually when the ratings are good so the funniest thing is people don't realize six five six years ago when we were doing this podcast dude it was torture to watch the wwe product and have to talk about it on, on, on every week right yeah are you serious like we, we did there, there was literally nothing that we liked we didn't like the fans hijacking the show we didn't like the we didn't understand why you were you want to put your top baby face on TV every week to get booed out of the building? Why don't you turn the guy heel? Like, you know, just, right. like the basic criticism that we were like, so this, you know, say it all along. But like now all of a sudden it's happening. Like, okay, WWE you know, and WWE was not doing good in the numbers. Every year they were dropping 10% of their, in, in their numbers, that their their audience share literally every year for like five, six, seven, eight straight years. And I remember, yeah. and I remember saying during that time, Disco, mm-hmm. that even though I didn't like the show and, you know, I didn't like anything about WWE, right? And uh, mm-hmm. I always said the one thing about WWE is when they have competition, they get a lot better. And number mm-hmm. two, they adapt better than anybody I've ever seen. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. And the problem, the when they saw ECW was hot, they started doing Attitude Era right. ECW. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. And the problem that AEW faces, you had a rookie you know, owner or a rookie boss that obviously came in and just wanted to get like a bunch of dumps. Like they were, they were beating, like if you look at the early, like the first year of AW, like the fan base and the company was taking way too many, you know, W's just because they were beating NXT in the ring. Okay. And like they thought, okay, this formula is fine. Like, you know, we're beating NXT. And everybody's putting over the show, the matches and stuff. And like we're beating NXT. And like that, bro, they really haven't changed that much from 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 that period of time, like 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 how have they evolved? Like you know, as the ratings have gone down, they haven't really they've, they've actually doubled down on a lot of stuff. It's right. like they overpaid for 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 guys from Japan, from Japanese wrestling. They've overvalued these guys and thought they're going to come in and help out everything. But bro, you just you fed into this fan base, and after four years, if you don't realize that, like dude, you got to get outside this box and start drawing fans because that's what w- WWE is is fishing in different ponds right now, and they're selling out everywhere. It's like you guys got to start fishing in a different pond. You know what I'm saying? Instead of like fishing in the same pond, because it doesn't look like there's a lot of more, a lot of fish to catch now. And if you, if you if you keep throwing the same fish in there, you know, like the Will Ospreys and the Okadas and stuff, it's like you're not, you're not going to catch a prize. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Whatever. Well, but, well you know, we'll it, I mean, yeah. last week's rating was an eye opener, right? Yeah. Well, every week before you had, you that, had Okada, you, you had Will Osprey. Um, you know, what was the main event? Uh. What was it? Oh, six man. Wasn't there something like that? Or uh, oh, it was, uh, Edge, Edge, and Edge, and what's his name in the in the what do you call it match? No, no, no. That was the week before, two weeks ago. No, the main oh. event was um, Swerve. Oh, Swerve and Swerve and uh, uh, to catch the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he's had uh, so many main events that were not main events. You know what I'm saying? Which hurts the product. You know, and the whole concept of that company was we got all these great matches, and it's like. But Dude, that's not enough. Well, that's, no, but my point is, if that's all your concept is, why were you not putting more over wrestlers in the main events? Right. You know what I'm saying? Just why that, not? Like, if everybody's the best wrestler and they're all got great stories, you put in matches that you thought were well, like, like you keep you kept throwing Daniel Garcia in there. Right. It's and like, for what? a while, James, you, <laughs> Jimmy Utah, yeah, like, Riho. Yeah. And then, you know. then, then like the past couple months, you got through like about about eight to eight to ten weeks of TV, where you featured on a weekly basis a bunch of old Japanese guys, right? Like, like repeatedly, 
Yeah, that really. I'm like, I'm like, what they do? What he got? Like, we're done. But like, we see, we, if we, Minoru Suzuki, it's like, okay, that's, we're, we're, we're better fill as the old Japanese legends, right? It's like a few weeks later, it's like, well, we're going to get Ju Nakayama in there, too. And Yuji Nagata like, was used. And, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Why? Because, because like, Tony yeah. is a huge, huge Japanese <laughs> wrestling fan. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and who the punk, punk, punk wrestled uh, the Genie? Yeah. Right. Uh, if, uh, if Tony was a quarterback, he's like, he's, if Tony was like a football coach, he's like trying a fake punt from his, like his own seven yard line. And they're down like, like, down like seven to nothing, you know, and, 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 like late in the third quarter. You're going like, why are you doing this? <laughs> it's like, I got, got my reasons, you know, I don't know, whatever. Right. So, well, let me show know. you this since this is related. And yes, yeah, for yesterday, but we didn't get to it. This is Tony Khan with Sammy Guevara backstage. Oh, this, this is a, right. There's a clip. Cody, Cody, Tony yeah. got his booking sheet in those, right? I can hear it. Have All you right. seen the booking sheet, by the way? No. I hear it. What is it? You mean yeah. the booking sheet that he uses? Do you mind? If- yeah, like his big notebook. You'll okay. see. But if we step in your office and talk for a sec, there was some segment we had like on Rampage a couple weeks ago where the crowd's just chanting like, me, basically. Dude, uh, the mocks that stay Yeah, yeah. That's, I just wanted to tie these just to kind of see where we're headed and whatnot. Well, that was kind of, yeah. I wanted to feel how it came out tonight because we're just getting out of full gear. So that's mm-hmm. why, like I said, I'm mapping stuff out here. Now we're like a few months out. You can see we're like, see how far we are out from the pay per view. These are all the different weeks. So, like, I've got you guys here, but I also put you in here and you're doing this match with Mox here as part of this. So, Mox and Hangman got into their stuff mm-hmm. here. And then which crit you, some of your stuff would be tied to Chris and Starks. So I feel like there's some good matches in here. We think we're missing anything, not doing any singles with me. I, I think there's something there with you and Chris and Starks and Andrade. And so I do feel like uh, seeing people's reaction, I do feel like there's a fun story with Garcia. Well, I think that could be a that. trios with Chris. Yeah. Bro, did you see this case? He has but, but this this is funny, okay? Because he had he had a uh, somebody he had commented previously. Okay, remember this is what we started talking about. This where Joe was bringing up about the uh, the the video game simulator, Booking game, or, or booking mm-hmm. game stealing, right? Remember he was talking about how like how easy it is now that he's like subverted the, the page of like the thing. Remember he was talking about he had his thing like written out, but then he flipped it. Okay, <laughs> like, so now it's like in long form he's got the maps of it, but then he says it's so much easier to read. Bro, the guy's like already booked his shows. Yeah, like eight to ten to sixteen weeks out, and just plugging the. Okay, this is the time for this match. This is the time for this match. Just, and it's like, bro, you can't tell organically what's happening every week. Whether you should like call things on the fly or something, which makes me feel that what we're seeing right now is you've got Joe. Okay, he he booked these people all as like heels, right? But all of a sudden now you got Joe's a baby face, Worms a baby face. Um, who else you got? Uh, the the Blackpool Combat Club. You don't know where they're. It's like he booked, he's booking his stuff and not realizing that the fans are going to start either booing or cheering differently for guys, you know, regardless of what, what, what you book. And it seems like he's still just sticking to his chart right now. Because like we're saying, like, well, well, what's the deal with Will Osprey? Why is he still in the heel faction? Why is Swerve still in the heel faction? I mean, Joe's a baby face, but he's never really, you know, acknowledged the, the, the crowd response, which would get him over even more, you know? <laughs> so like, I don't know, man. There's like, there's so many things that are, that are, that are so confusing to me that but it's common sense stuff to people like me and you. And I'm wondering, like, bro, you got Sanjay, you got Jimmy Jacobs, Z Malenko, Jared, you got all these guys there. They're not like, they, they have to see this stuff's confusing too. They do. You know, so what, you know, is nobody, is people. Nobody is going here? to risk getting him mad, getting on his bad side and losing all that money, bro. They don't do house shows. They <laughs> can have great hotels. They have great catering. You know, they have, it's very cush and it's guaranteed payment. You know, every 15 right. days you get paid. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. Yo, what's up? I just want to thank you guys for watching this clip. Don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe and join our YouTube membership for hours and hours of exclusive unedited, uncensored content. And being a member will help you get involved in our upcoming live streams. Uh, Thank you for your support. Thank you for riding with us. I know you got a lot of other uh, podcast choices, be it wrestling or other ones. And thank you for picking us. Boom.